Okay, back working on the clutch arm for the BSA C15. Uh, I, this is just a piece of mild steel plate that I cut out, I cut a chunk of it out, and then I shaped this end of it to fit into the notch that had been worn into the clutch arm over the years by the, uh, this piece here, which was fitted on there, but it was over here, these holes lined up. Um, and as the clutch arm moved like this over the years, when you pull in the clutch, er, er, uh, this little bit would wiggle back and forth on the arm, and it slowly dug itself a, a little groove right there, a little notch. So I shaped a piece of uh, steel that was the same width as the clutch arm, the little end of that to fit into the notch. And then I took this piece of steel right here and the, and the clutch arm to my local welding shop. And I said, could you weld these two things together for me and fill that notch in, which they did quite nicely. There was all kinds of like bubbled up welding excess here and there. You see how it's nice and flat now. I got it nice and flat using a bastard file and simply hand filing it very carefully. That's a tedious, slow process, but it slowly gets you to the exact shape that you need. Uh, if you use power tools to do that, which you can, uh, I think that you run the risk of removing too much material. And uh, so I like to use a hand file. Uh, and you can see that where it's shiny, that's where I've done hand filing on both sides there. It's exactly the right width. I haven't really shaved much material off of that clutch lever arm. It seems to be the same width. We're very, very close to it all the way along there. <clears throat> now I'm going to cut this excess. The reason that I made this piece of steel so long is so that they could hold it and weld it in at the same time. The actual amount that I needed was only about this big and that's just such a small little piece of steel it would have been impossible to work with. So I made this so that they'd have something to you know, grab with a pair of pliers and hold it in place while they welded it. Um, now I will cut right along here to recreate the original shape of the clutch arm. They didn't even, actually they even kept that hole open for me, which is Okay, back again, went down to the garage, and this is five minutes of work with a Dremel tool, or rotary tool. Um, and you can see this isn't perfect. I've still got, this is still a little raised right in here. This is still a little bit higher than it needs to be. And I did that on purpose, because I will finish it with a hand file which is a much slower process right here and more controllable. And I will slowly bring that down to level so that my new plunger that I'm making will fit just perfectly. Um, I'll know I'm at about the right spot when those holes line up, <clears throat> but I will have to drill this one out a bit. And I'm not gonna have to take that down much. I got pretty close. What I used was a, uh, a little tiny cutoff wheel to shave it to about here. And then I got a grinding stone and brought it down the rest of the way and radius to this back out the way it should be right there. <clears throat> so I'll finish this with a hand file. It's still a little bit too tall right here. If you see the, uh, maybe you can see it better with the black, with a darker background. But here, there we go. You can see that how the, uh, the side of that file lines up with the angle right on top of that arm, and then, then that's too tall, right, right in here, right where the welding was. So I'll just slowly take that down a little bit with a hand, saw, a hand file until it's perfect. And this clutch arm should work for another 60 years.